Welcome for, uh, students to my lecture number 51 which talks of design of threshing equipment. As I said my, in my previous uh, lecture that we will talk of the design of uh, such an equipment in my um, uh, different next lecture. So, this is the one where we will talk of the design of the threshing equipment. What is there in the design as such? You have seen what a uh, threshing equipment is, what, what are the principles on which threshing takes place? what are the essential components in which, um, uh, which through which the crop has to move and uh, what should be their dimensions, what should be the power requirement, what should be the speed at which it should move depending upon the type of the crop. These are the things which we need to design. So, let us have a look at what we have for you about uh, um, designing of threshing equipment. Design of the concave. See, we as I said, the different components. The con uh, components we thought that cylinder, then the concave, then the entry point of it, the exit point of it, the size of the concave, size of the cylinder, the speed at which it works, and the power um, uh, amount of power which is required. So, with these, let's have a look at these uh, uh, aspects of what it is. See, design of the concave. The number of strokes of the rasp bar, you know that these uh, the, let us have a look at first these uh, and then we will come to the design of the concave here. The threshing units, A is a polygon drum with concave. Now, this is uh, the design A here, threshing unit A and threshing unit B. Now, in this uh, dr circular drum with concave. So, this is the circular drum with concave and this is the polygon drum with concave, this is the concave here. Now, profile C is the profile rasp bar, C this is the profile rasp bar and D is the profile rasp bar with notch surfaces, you can see that this is notch surfaces which are there. Then uh, band conveyor, this is the conveyor which is uh, the here, now you can see this is the conveyor. Uh, v is the speed, uh, Vp is the speed, yes this is the speed which is shown here. Then direction of grain delivery meter per second, this is the grain, the grain delivery through this. Then rest bar, well rest bar v is 2, so this is the rest bar, uh, this is the 1. Then concave mountings, you can see the concave mountings, this is, this is the 1 which is concave mounting on which the concave is there concave bars, this is the concave bar, these are the concave bars which are there in these. Then uh, rods number 5 is these, these are the rods which are there to create the concave. Then concave holder 6 is concave holder, this is the concave holder which is holding it with, this, with the whole uh, system. Then 7 is working slit, this is the working slit here this is the working slit in which the material will come and then go away. Then the working slit inlet, this is the inlet of the working slit which is uh, 8 here, uh, this is the inlet here and this is the outlet here, this is 9 is outlet and this inlet is this place. So, 10th is guiding shield, uh, this is the guiding shield. So, after it has been thrust where it will go. So, as such now you see here that this is the thresher which is of a um, polygon type of drum and this is circular drum and we have talked of each and every element here. Now, we see um, what we mean by the design of this as such here. The number of strokes of rasper i is given as i is equal to alpha by twice pi n z. What is this? That alpha is the angle of wrap. Now, you can see the angle of wrap, this is the angle of wrap which is shown here. Then number of drums, number of drum revolutions, what will be the RPM of that? N is talking of the RPM. J is the number of rest bars on the drums conference, uh, 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 circumference, sorry. So, how many rest bars are there? These are the rest bars here or there, both uh, these, these, these are the rest bars, here are these rest bars over here. So, how many are there in this? So, this will talk of this. Now, where I can also be put at n into z into z1, where z1 is the number of concave bars and uh, z is number of rasp bars on the drums circumference and z1, z1 is the number of concave bars. So, as such what we get 
the number of strokes of rust bark I. See number of strokes, how many strokes it will have. This is important of for the design. What it is? It depends on the, the angle of wrap, it depends on the speed, it depends on the number of rest bars which are there and then the, it depends on uh, what is the number of concave bars which are there. So, the design of the concave will require this aspect first. Then if you go to the next uh, slide, let us see what else is there. Peripheral width, peripheral width of the concave should range from. Now, what is the diagram of this? What is the value of this? What is should be the length of that? Now, you see here the peripheral width of the concave. Uh, you have seen that the width of the concave and length of the concave. If you are talking of the drum, then the uh, the length will be of the concave is the total length of the drum, and width here will be slightly more than that because it will have something from entry and something to come out. Uh, output material and the other side is your uh, the um, walker where the um, stressed uh, I mean the thrust uh, straw will go. So, um, how what should be this distance now this is given here that the concave should the width of the concave should range from one third to five twelfth of a peripheral width of the cylinder or drum. This is the concept which is given. Now, let me tell you that uh, how we have got this is out of the experience of the researchers on that basis we are in a position to design. You can design depending on this and therefore, the periphery if the diameter is d, if the diameter of the thrusting drum is d which you need to um, think of. So, if the diameter is d according the peripheral widths will vary from this value to this value that is pi d by 3 to 5 pi d by 12. Now, clearance between the cylinder and the concave. Now, this is very important as such because you as I have explained earlier that when the material is there along with the grain and the straw, when it comes here it has to be bitten and then it has to be compressed and then only there will be rubbing action taking place and the you know, grains will be removed. So, the, the size of the conclave is very, very important. So, the inlet varies between 13 to 19 and the outlet is smaller. So, that when you take it out and with the beating action, then the um, thrusting will be proper. So, the cylinder, cylinder and concave inlet and outlet uh, um, di dimensions are these, you can choose any, any one between this. Now, what is thrusting capacity of a thruster for a given crop? Now, for any given curve, what is mean by thrusting capacity? How do you get thrusting capacity? How do you calculate ca thrusting capacity? Well, it will depend on the feeding rate at which you dis uh, feed the material. You, um, it depends on the length of the drum and the number of bars which are there. So, you can see here that thrusting capacity, thrusting capacity is dependent on Q0, LR and M, where Q0 allowable feeding rate, what is the feeding rate? then what is the length of the drum in meters and the number of bars uh, which are there. So, using this you can get what is the uh, thrusting capacity of a raspberry type of thruster. Now, in case of a spike tooth type of thruster, now the design is different. You can see here we have shown you the raspberry type is this and the thrusting uh, these are the thrusting elements, these spikes are the thrusting elements. So, they are the two are two different designs and therefore, uh, one has to understand this accordingly you can find out the total capacity of the stressor. Uh, generally, um, this um, the wheat uh, uh, for a wheat crop spike tooth type of uh, the thrusters are used or for multi crop thrusters uh, has this element. So, for these this q r is given as q dos z where permissible feeding rate is this and the number of uh, tooth number of tooth which are there these spike tooth which are there. So, depending on this, the spike tooth type of thruster will give you a thrusting capacity of this here. Arrangement of spikes on the drum, yeah, how they are arranged, it is uh, worth understanding the, uh, the uh, design of the uh, spikes, how they are designed. You can see that in a spiral fashion it is uh, designed, for example, you can see here that it goes from here to there, 
like this, like this. This is how they are uh, put in the flesh tooth, uh, tooth tracing unit. Now, this is a tooth tracing unit which is there and details are already given. Now, arrangement of spikes on the, what is the arrangement is given to you here. Distribution of tooth on a developed drum and concave surface. Now, this is what it is. And this is the uh, design in which they are connected. What are these? The total number of tooth here, you can say the total number of teeth, you can say, but no, we will call because spike tooth. So, we will call this a total number of tooth. Z is given by MP into LP by A plus 1. The here, distance between two adjacent path is A and then the length of the drum. So, if number of teeth present in the same, MP talks of the number of the, uh, the in the same plane of rotation, number of teeth. You can see here, these are the ones which are there. So, one has to understand uh, what is this, uh, what is the um, uh, tooth here and what is the total number. So, depending on the number, you can know what should be the arrangement and how it should be uh, kept. So, that we get the proper design. Otherwise, what will happen? The, uh, the tracing will not take uh, place properly. So, the um, uh, tooth must be designed on that on the periphery of the drum. If you have, uh, if you get an opportunity to see the unit uh, yourself in the laboratory or in your location or if, um, a, a unit which you have purchased, you will be able to understand and appreciate what exactly I am trying to say here with respect to the arrangement of the spike tooth. Otherwise, the thrusting will not be proper, you will not get clean grains, you will not grain the, uh, get the uh, straw which is properly uh, removed uh, from the grains. Power requirement, yes, once we talked of this, the, the important things, now we talk of the power requirement. What is the power requirement of the thrusting unit? How, how much is the power requirement? What are the things which happen in this? How, why power is required? What are the elements which require power? So, here just see power supplied to the drum by an engine say N s is utilized to overcome the resistance N j, overcome the uh, idle resistance. Anything that when you start initially it will require some idle resistance to overcome and then the next part of it. So, and the total uh, useful resistance due to the process of threshing. So, initial idle resistance for to start the system from there, you will require certain force. So, for example, in engine, you might have seen that the frictional forces are overcome and then only the power goes to the uh, crank shaft and the crank uh, operates. So, similarly, in just like battery, you have the internal resistance of the battery. So, if you take a, 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 a you can say the corollary from there or an analogy from there, then we say that in this drum, the total power required will be uh, of two kinds. One to overcome the idle resistance uh, which we call here as N j and the um, next is for the useful work that will be done which we call as this. In fact, why I have used because we have taken this information from the Goryachkin theory of, uh, of threshing and uh, well uh, you may say that why I have taken there because uh, the literature available as such must also be presented to you in the form that are available. And uh, we have tried to concise that and just uh, give you the basis of that. We have not changed the nomenclature as such because uh, we want to give credit to the, uh, to the person or the scientist who has developed this, but we want to explain the thing which is uh, behind this, uh, the whole aspects uh, of uh, finding out the um, power. How do you get the idle resistance? Now, question is how to get the idle resistance? This is caused by the friction in the bearings of the drum shafts, pivots and by ventilating effect, ventilating effect when it uh, rotates. This resistance whose value depends primarily on the drum's rotational speed. So, it, it depends primarily on the rotational speed that this N j we are calling of the resistance and this he has given as this where it has two components A omega plus B omega. Now, here it is important to note that the here this omega he has given as the peripheral speed of the drum meter per second. That means, it is not as omega which we generally take as connotation or notation for the angular speed, it is not so here. He is talking of the peripheral speed of the drum in meter per second is the answer here. Now, A and B are the two factors which uh, which has been taken by Goryachkin uh, 
uh, and uh, this is the relationship which he developed to find out n j the idle resistance um, uh, for the uh, power which is utilized and the next part is the actual work which is done. So, and the values they have, he has given certain values for the uh, depending upon whether it is a reservoir type or it is a peg tooth type values have been given which will help you to uh, uh, use them and find out the factors picture uh, this of course, the empirical equation which has been developed over a period of time and uh, he has done lot of work on uh, finding out then only he is in a position to get the values of B at uh, various types of uh, threshing elements when it is peg to type or as well type okay, A and B both the values. So, using these you can find N j. mass of air set in motion by the drum reservoirs within uh, 1 second or per second because we would like to know what is the mass of air set in motion. See what happens when the drum is rotating and uh, there will be an air uh, which will be also moving along with that. So, what is the mass of air which is put in motion when the drum is rotating and that uh, when you have the concave. So, the, this air is coming inside uh, when the material is thrown inside the uh, concave between the drum and this. So, the, it is very important to understand about the mass of um, the about the mass of air which is set in motion by the drum rest bars. What is this? This is the value which is given m p. m p is the mass of air set in motion by the drum which is an kg per second and then it depends on what? the bulk density of the air which is there, the frontal surface of the rest bar what is the frontal surface, then the number of strokes of the rest bar against the grain layer how many um, uh, strokes it gives while in rotation and then the linear velocity the center of the frontal surface of rest bar what is the linear velocity. So, depending upon these factors then the mass of air which is set in motion will be found out using this particular equation. Now, it is also true that this air speed V p is directly proportional to V c which is the linear velocity of the central of the frontal surface. So, the air speed which is there uh, outside with this air will definitely have a relationship with the V c which is the uh, linear velocity of the center of the frontal surface. So, and this once it is proportional this proportionality constant is xi here and this value of this is taken as 0.55. Now, this value has been taken by him and that is why we would like to take uh, tell that well this is out of experience and the design and the mechanics which he has developed to find out the pressure uh, sorry the power that is why we must use this uh, value whenever uh, it is required to be used. So, the B uh, part of it that means the second part B omega q is nothing but high this is the kinetic energy power used for imparting the kinetic energy to the air. So, what is the kinetic energy which is imparted to the air is half m v square. So, you can use this and then the ultimate equation is this part of it. So, what you get is this is the uh, there are two portions which he gave for m j one is a um, omega the other is b um, plus b omega 3 and how they are uh, calculated this is what he has given. Gorechki's drum theory. Now, mm, that you talk of the air, he has talked of the conclave, uh, concave, and he has talked of the various aspects of the mm, drums, uh, ele threshing elements, etcetera. Now, he is talking of the drum theory. What theory he has given? It is uh, well, must one must appreciate. See, the mm, assuming that the strokes of the rest bar against the grain layer to be inelastic, this is assumption which he has given. Now, it is important to take care of this it is inelastic that means, there is, there is uh, no elasticity starting this reasoning from the well known equality between impulse of a force and momentum. So, impulse and moment is known to us. So, the p i into delta t where p i is the force with which a high force working for a short duration of time impulse nothing but change in momentum delta m into v where delta m is the striking time and uh, delta m is the material delta t is the striking time, delta m is material mass struck by rest bar and v is the speed of the material obtained in time, speed of the material obtained in time delta t this is the, the speed it will achieve. So, this is the basic equation which he wants to take 
assuming that uh, the grain layer or the rest bar or uh, the strokes of strokes of the rest bar against the grain layer is inelastic. This is the basis of that. And where he also further takes that okay, delta m by uh, delta t that is mass delivers per second um, used by m to dash. Now, Goryachkin assumptions uh, according to Goryachkin's assumption the power required to impart an impact force P 1 will amount to what is this P 1 will amount to P 1 into V is equal to m dash V square this is what it will be because the force is P 1 into V will give you power and then m dash V this side is also power. So, this is as per his assumption this is what the power will be. Now, you see how uh, carefully and very meticulously he has picked up each and every component of the thresher and the threshing elements and uh, tried to find out the power required. As such if somebody asked you what is the power required you would say that okay, let us find out the torque of the axle and then uh, speed. So, tau until you will say this is the power required, but then when you go into details of this actual threshing uh, how much is the power required because it is essential to know that. So, if you go into details maybe that you will have to follow this theory to get into some idea. You can say that well I will have a different theory then you must have a different argument of uh, understanding this as he say that the air movement yes air movement is taking place around the drum when the drum rotates you will find that there is air is definitely. So, um, he has taken that part of his what is the mass of that air how to account for the mass of that air how to account for the velocity of that air. So, in addition to uh, imparting a specific mass at certain speed, the resistance of the concave during shifting over it thrust layer also occurs. So, uh, using this now what we get here is P 2 is, is equal to F into P, where F is coefficient of materials rubbing in the working slit. This is what it is. P you have got the force earlier. So, therefore, total resistance on the operating drums conf, uh, circumference will be expressed by this P total force P 1 plus P 2. So, what is P? P 1 we have got from the uh, previous uh, slide we have seen m dash V and P 2 is uh, P f times P which is you have got here. So, then if we take these then we can get from here this value P minus f P is equal to m dash V and uh, therefore, P is equal to m dash V by 1 minus F. This is what exactly is shown over here. This is how it comes. So, this is the way he has tried to understand the theory of that and uh, given a concept. We need to appreciate the concept given by Goryachkin and uh, worth understanding. If we have something addition, if you can add to the system, why not? But yes somebody has given a, uh, a concept let us appreciate that part. The power required for the drums operation then what is the power required for the drums operation what is that power then N u will be nothing but this is what it is which we had got earlier so, power which we uh, which we had in fact nominated as that power now this is equal to here because we got the force over there uh, that force was m dash v by 1 minus f and when it is coming to power that uh, that force into velocity will give you that power which has come over here. Therefore, the total power required as we started in the beginning n s equal to n j u is now given by this particular equation here we discussed all in detail about what is the a w a omega what is b omega q and what is this component. We had talked of two things first one was the resistance of the idle resistance connected and then is the useful work and with that we also talked of the op, uh, air which is moving there and how that air is taken into account what is the mass of that air etcetera we have taken that into account you can see here that uh, the details values are given which were uh, for uh, these values are given here for the uh, rest bar drive 
peg tooth type drum values of A, then rest bar type and peg tooth type values of B. Okay? And then peripheral velocity of the drum here, it is written still peripheral velocity you must keep in mind that this omega here as we say generally I repeat is not uh, radians per second, but here he is given a nomenclature as peripheral velocity and uh, V is the speed of the material obtained in time uh, in time delta t. So, as such I think uh, this is uh, the stocks of the total power required uh, in the drum. Well, uh, we wanted uh, that let uh, there be a small problem using this uh, uh, the theory which we just talked of and uh, virtually this will this is nothing but in fact a uh, application of that theory and putting these values. Now, you see uh, the problem says that determine the total power required uh, for a wheat thresher equipped with the spike tooth cylinder uh, operating at a peripheral speed of 30 meter per second. The feed rate has been taken at 4 tons uh, or 4000 kg per hour. Now, the details for the um, type of uh, this is a spike tooth cylinder. So, a spike tooth means the values uh, is feet. So, the value of A and B you know then what is the value of f which is also given to you earlier. So, this value you can take as this and v is given as 30 meter per second this is the velocity because is the velocity of the this is the peripheral velocity as well as the velocity uh, this which is achieved by the mass when it moves along with that because there is a relative motion between these two. And so, we can use this equation direct uh, right away this equation can be used uh, can be used and we can find the values because all data are uh, over here and you can just put the values. So, you can just if you put these values you can see here that uh, N j the portion which is talking of the idle resistance can be found out from uh, putting all these details and this is the value of N j which is so 1.365 kilowatt possibly. Uh, this is a higher value than when you are talking of a bigger one you may find that this is the idle resistance which is required if you talk of the total and then is this is useful one which talks of uh, this. So, uh, if you can get this way so the total is 4.695 kilowatt is the power required for uh, the threshing in the uh, in the in the problem which is given it is for wheat and the speed at which it is given. Now, remember that uh, this is just a representative problem you you can be given different problems may be that uh, in other lectures or in our assignments we will give you certain problems which will uh, have slight more intricacies and uh, more concept uh, to be utilized. Here I just wanted because the theory I have just uh, talked to you. So, it is very relevant to give you a small problem by just uh, putting these values and get the answer. Okay. Uh, well, I think uh, through this uh, design what I have tried to explain to you is what are the components which must be looked into uh, from the point of their design which are the sizes and the capacities and the power requirement etcetera. How to choose whether uh, in the crop is there wheat or a paddy or whatever else. So, depending upon the crop depending upon the type of the design which you take whether a circular drum or you are talking of hectagonal uh, drum you have to think of the uh, design. Now, we I am sure that there could be many questions uh, after hearing uh, me with those questions we would like to answer as and when you are uh, uh, firing it to us and uh, we will have more dialogue once uh, you understand better this. And I, I think uh, uh, you will be in a position to design with this uh, knowledge. Uh, we would like to close here and uh, uh, thank you very much.